celebrate the Lord. Give him glory. Indeed, he, he makes all things new during the course of this, this new year. I'd like you to flash back in your mind and look for a cogent reason to give him praise for giving you a new opportunity, a new season to right everything that is wrong, a new window in which you walking by the grace of God will prosecute every detail of your ordination. Can you reach back in your mind and give him thanks for this new window that he has made available? We thank you because it is written that your mercies are new, new every morning. We see the stream of your faithfulness and we know that the God that stands behind us is a living God. Thank you, our Father. And we give you praise, we exalt your name. As we begin this year, we do not take for granted the miracles that you wrought in our lives in the previous year. We lay to heart every act of mercy that you have prosecuted on our behalf. We also stand in great hope of the possibilities that lie ahead of us. And we come to renew our covenant with you. That your hand upon our lives will be stronger. And your purposes will come to pass. In Jesus mighty name. You may be seated. God bless you. It's advice, advisable not to step into a year without adequate preparation. And based on the few tips that God has brought to a notice about the content of this year, we have built a line of education, spiritual education, that is consistent the things that God has revealed in order to, to equip us adequately to partner with God in this new season. And the emphasis of our concentration in this month's meeting is walking in the covenant. If you came with your Bible, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 17. Walking in the covenant. Before I begin the reading, if you have already turned, I'd like to present a theological overview of the covenants that are obtainable in the scripture, and the scope and the content of those covenants, and why we are making reference to Abraham at this point in time. Why is it Abraham? Why not Moses? Because God also established a covenant with Moses. So because of that, we may need to establish a brief overview on the concept of covenant and the two major covenants that are in the scriptures. The first covenant that we have, in fact, is the oldest covenant, is the covenant that God established with Abraham, which is what we are trying to investigate and to know how to walk in. We need to consult a scripture to make the point I want to make, and that scripture may be in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 12. Trying to provide the covenant of Abraham. How is it different from the covenant of Moses? 
First and foremost, without wasting your time, the covenant of Moses had to do with the nation of Israel. God had adopted a nation. And God, in order for him to fulfill his purposes and his programs in that nation, he had to bring that nation under his government. So he had to give them a prescription of the culture of that nation. Hallelujah. He had to give them a prescription of what the culture of that nation should look like. And the prescription that he gave them was consistent with his nature. See, the laws of God actually derive from the nature of God. And so he was selling out his nature to become the culture of a certain people that were designed to operate under his government by reason of the covenant that he has with their ancestors. Now, so... The covenant of Moses exalted Israel as a prototype that God intends to deal with so that all nations will be moved to jealousy when they look upon what God has achieved in that nation just because they subscribe to his government and to his culture. All right, it is, it is an Israeli kind of thing. Meanwhile, according to the new covenant, we are also spiritual Israel. All right. Because Abraham had two kinds of descendants. If you check uh, the way God dealt with him, God took him to the seashore and God also asked him to lift up his eyes to look at the stars. Uh, he's talking about two aspects of his descendants. Uh, the seashore descendants and the star descendants. And so we are spiritual Israel because when he lifted up his eyes to look at the stars, he actually saw you in his spirit. Hallelujah. So, um, but it must be understood that theologically, theologically, the covenant that God had with Moses was to establish a government over the children of Israel as a prototype of what God intends to do with the people that are submitted to him. Hallelujah. But you see, the scope and the dimension of the covenant of Abraham, which is a subject of our study is quite vast. It's more vast than that which Moses had. And we are here to study that covenant to see the intricacies of the covenant and how to walk therein. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Before we go to Genesis chapter 17, let's check Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and, out of thy, and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I'll show thee. And I'll make of thee a great nation. And I'll bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. This is the call of Abraham. Abraham had a choice either to respond to the call or not. But thank God he responded to the call. And when he responded to the call, and if you keep reading, you will find out that eventually Abraham arrived in the land of Canaan. When Abraham arrived in the land of Canaan, the thing that God did was that he appeared unto him. See, all this time God was speaking to him. But when he got into the place that he wanted him to be, God now decided to appear to him. On the strength of that appearance, Abraham decided to raise an altar unto the Lord that appeared unto him. So his walk with God began on that altar. And if we bring that altar into New Testament perspective, it is the altar of consecration. Abraham was saying, I don't know you much, but I have decided to trust you. And I want my life to be a result of your wisdom because it is obvious that you have a way of giving directives. I'm willing to submit to your directives. I'm willing to become the product of the wisdom that is captured in the directives that you're giving me. He raised an altar unto the Lord and it was an altar, an altar of committal to God. He was giving God the response, the authority to walk his wisdom out through his life. 
Now, it is possible for you to be born again, but you never raise this altar to God. Uh, God is not your Lord. He doesn't have authority to manipulate your destiny consistent with his intent. Uh, just in case he attempts to do that, it will be an act of violation because your will has not allowed him such authority in your ecosystem. So one of the first things that a believer should be exposed to when he gives his life to Christ is to be brought doctrinally to that point where he understands the need to consecrate to serve the will of God. Um, in, in legally, legally, what, um, what makes us God's property is that God paid our bride price in full. We were captives to the enemy. And it was an act of rebellion that subjugated us to the power of the kingdom of darkness. And it came to pass that by reason of the sacrifice of the Son of God, the claims of divine justice that gave Satan the authority to administer the justice system of heaven as articulated in the charter of glory. Because the uh, the perspective uh, captured in that chapter is that if you eat of this food in dying, ye shall die. Uh, and it happens to be that God is not in charge of death. He's not a God of death. So, uh, meanwhile, the legal requirement, the legal implication of that level of violation was that death was going to begin to play out a protocol in the life of man. And the way it, it, it was administered was that Satan, who is the author of death, now had authority over man on the account of his rebellion. So one of the things you will notice is this. People that decide to walk with God, they see less and less of the devil. And just in case he came around, many of them did not notice it. But if you are not walking as an instrument that is existing to serve the will of God, you are going to be living in a habitat that is controlled by demonic power. Because that is the fate of any man that is living in rebellion. The accurate way to live with God, to walk with God, is to allow God be wiser than you. He calls the shots and you are sheepish enough to obey his every word. If you operate that way, you are going to find out that there is a level of insulation a consistent dispatch of the insulation of God, barricades of God, that will keep you within the confines of God's protective eye. And you become a product that is an expression of the thing that God intends to do in the life of one that is subject to him. See, when man broke the protocol, then the authority of the devil became strong over his life. And in order to break the authority of the devil, what God did was that he uh, satisfied the claim of divine justice. You see, man's problem was a legal problem. And the solution that God had to offer was a legal solution. And when the claims of divine justice were satisfied, it means that just in case the devil is still, in bond, is still putting a believer in bondage, it is because the believer is not aware that the claims of divine justice were satisfied. And secondly, if he is aware and is living in further rebellion, he is the one that has taken his hand to empower the devil to afflict his life. So when you see someone that is a Christian that is afflicted, he is not totally innocent of his affliction. I know you don't like my talk, but I came today to talk covenant talk. It's deep talk. Very deep talk. So there are some barriers you attend. is is actually almost a sin for you to cry. It's almost somewhere there. <laughs> because the man that has fallen, he did not fall most of He did not fall unknowingly. He had a part to play in that which happened. And I say some barriers, some barriers, not all, but some Barriers. Now, so walk with me. Let us see this covenant of Abraham. This covenant God had with Abraham. The covenant that God had with Abraham 
or as we begin to unravel it in the book of Genesis chapter 17, you are going to see that it's on the platform of that same covenant that Jesus came, indicative of the fact that even though God was aware that humanity had fallen, God did not make any conscious effort for the recovery of humanity until in the day of Abraham. There were many mighty men that walked with God before Abraham came, but there was no initiative from God to rescue humankind until Abraham showed up. Theologically, redemption began with Abraham. That's when God decided to begin to rescue man. And that rescue mission was captured in his call and in his covenant. The epicenter, the epicenter of that rescue mission, that is redemption, is captured in the ministry of Christ, but it began with the call of Abraham. It was a deliberate intent of God to rescue humanity out of the authority of the kingdom of darkness. You see, when Abraham was still alive and he was operating this covenant, the scope of the covenant was still limited to Israel. The death of Jesus was what made that covenant available to all nations. And it became a whosoever possibility. Anyone that believes, whether he's an Asian man, whether he's a deep man, whether he's an Urubu man, whosoever, they, it's just like developing a, a, a software and then you install it on a system. It is offline. It's only the owner of the system that can operate the software. But when you put the software online, it becomes accessible to somebody in New York, accessible to somebody in Zimbabwe. You see, the, the covenant was offline in the days of Abraham. And when Jesus came, the covenant was put online so everybody can access it. But it's the same covenant. Are you still with me? Now, my duty this weekend is to bring us to a point where we understand the implication of covenant walking. Covenant walking. Now, there's a lot of legalities, jurisdiction, and all of that talk that is weaved into covenant talk. It's actually talk for elders, not for babes. Now, so at any point in time that you don't understand what I'm saying, you, you have not reached the level in your work with God to understand that level of covenant. That's what it means. After five years, go back to the message. It will make fresh meaning to you. Uh, because covenant talk is deep talk. Now, if you go to your village, hallelujah, maybe your village is founded on 12 families. And the original families that founded the village, there was an agreement that they made. An agreement that the they are under oath only to pass the intent, the scope of the agreement to the eldest person coming after them. So there's a particular age that the first son gets to and then his father begins to intimate him of the agreement that was made that is binding on everybody that you are seeing. And for 112 generations, that agreement has been passed from generation to generation and that agreement is the reality that governs the life of people in that community. When they talk about those things, they don't talk about them in the market. Sometimes they wait in the night and then they enter the forest to discuss issues that have to do with that covenant. So when we are talking covenant talk, it's not baby talk. It's for elders. In fact, there are several proverbs that have been concocted in order to preserve the secrets of covenant just in case we need to speak about it in the town. We speak it with we speak about with proverbial languages, so that someone that has not been initiated into the court that he carries the burden of the covenant will not even be able to hear. His his ears are not trained to understand covenant language. Hallelujah. You might find two elders sitting under a hut and they're saying, Kai, there's cold though these days. Oh. We need just two firewood to bring heat. And then you, a normal, a, a mundane man that doesn't understand covenant language, we think you will rush and go and bring firewood. Do not know that there are deeper matters. What the elder is saying is that the spirit on the altar is crying and this kind of cry, the volume, haven't been assessed. It will take two lives to satisfy this cry and give them some space of about three years to rest. 
covenant language is deep language. It's not for strangers. You need to be initiated in order for you to be given access to understand the secrets of covenant. So just in case at any point in time, the lecture becomes so difficult for you to understand, it means you have been far away from your father's home. And that's why the, the proverbs in the household are a strange saying to you. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Genesis chapter 70. I just pray God gives us the opportunity to delve deeply. There are several things you can do. And you will utter some words. Some angels in the heaven will say, What? Who told you? How did you come about this knowledge? <laughs> Let us start gradually. And when Abraham, Abraham was 70 years old and nine. Now, this first lecture, are you with me? I say, are you with me? Now, this first lecture is what I titled pre-covenant conditions. Pre, he has not yet, he, there are some conditions you will have to meet before <laughs> God will now extend the privilege of covenant to you. So we are looking at pre-covenant conditions. And then subsequently in the lectures, you will begin to see the main pool of covenant and how to walk in it. And then you will be able to understand the life of several people. Why they live the way they live in society. It's, it's, it's deep. Right, so this is pre-covenant conditions. And when... Abraham was 70 years old and nine. The Lord, sorry, 90 years old and what? And nine. The Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. I am what? This is this looks like an attempt at introduction. God is, seems to be introducing himself to Abraham. But meanwhile, his work with God didn't start today. His work with God started a long time. The guy put himself on the line to obey God to come out of his habitation to a place he has never been before because God had ordained that that would be the platform from whence he will launch out uh, into the purpose of God for his life. So, God is introducing himself to Abraham as the Almighty God or the El Shaddai. Are you with me? So, he said, I am the El Shaddai. And the requirement is that you have to walk before me and be thou perfect. See, God, are you with me? God is an, is an eternal personality. That means there is no one name that you can give God that captures every aspect of God. In fact, time is not sufficient to know all there is to know about God. In fact, eternity is still limited in order for us to know everything there is to know about God. It is not possible to know everything about God because God is not a created being. God is not time-based. God is not circumstances limited. He is beyond time. He is beyond space. He is existence itself. And he comes to Abraham now and he tells him, I am the El Shaddai. Walk down before me and be now perfect. What's the next verse? What's the next verse? Um, technical T. Oh my. All right. Let me get to my own Bible. And the El Shaddai walked out before me and be now perfect. And then in verse 2, he said, And I will make my covenant between me and thee and multiply thee exceedingly. Now, so the pre-covenant condition is that you will need to handle the revelation of God as the El Shaddai and be perfect in it. That's the pre-covenant condition. It is after you have perfected your work with God according to the revelation of God as they El Shaddai, then God extends the scepter 
of covenant to you. It is on the strength of covenant that he will multiply you exceedingly. So there is a, a fundamental test that you must be subjected to and you must become excellent in that test. Then you become a candidate that can participate effectively in the covenant relationship that God wants to offer you. Is that clear? Now, first of all, we, we, we need to understand what El Shaddai means. I am the El Shaddai. If you have been in the house for a while, there, there was a time I did a study. And in that study, I took us to the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9. Where Jesus was teaching on the subject of prayer. And Jesus started by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Right? So, and I was trying to make us understand that when Jesus was teaching on the subject of prayer, he began with our Father. And I said that the reason for that is because the extent to which your enterprise of prayer is going to prosper is the degree to which you have captured the revelation of God as Father. That's the first thing I said. Then the second thing I said was that the place where God is domiciled is going to affect the way God responds to your prayer. And if, unfortunately for us, God is not in Boko. He's our Father who art in heaven. Now, our only link to heaven, our only link, are you with me? Our only link to heaven is the Holy Spirit. That's our link to heaven. So when we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, your spiritual ears will be opened up. You can hear God speak to you from heaven. The Holy Spirit bridges the gap such that heaven is not distant from you in, in terms of length and breadth. But heaven is domiciled in a dimension. And the Holy Spirit is the link that bridges the gap between those two dimensions. Are you here with me now? So when you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you are actually operating in heaven. Now, so when you pray the prayers you pray, it doesn't get to heaven in terms of the language utterance by which you have communicated that prayer. That's not how it reaches heaven. If you go to the book of Revelation chapter 5, you are going to see how prayers, how prayers ascend into the immortal realm. And in the immortal realm, according to the book of Revelation chapter 5, you find out that prayer ascends in terms of orders, in terms of orders, orders. So prayers actually in heaven are perceived just like sacrifices in the Old Testament that are offered in a bond fashion. They are perceived. That's how prayers are perceived. Because prayers are not received in terms of words. They, they have to pass through a conversion factor before they ascend into heaven in terms of others. One of the reasons why fasting is required is because fasting is a spice. It makes your prayers more effective. It makes the order more pungent. Are you still with me? Now, this kind of system had to exist because the father, you are praying so it's not in Boko, but it's in heaven. And then when God wants to now answer your prayer, he doesn't answer your prayer by any physical means. He also answers your prayer spiritually. Many of us know how to pray. We don't know how God answers prayer. Because he is in heaven, it is only the spirit of God that can convey the sense of God's response to us in the receptacle of our heart. Alright? And there are several prayers that you have received. You have received answers to. It will take six months before those answers manifest in the natural. Meanwhile, the answers got to you six months before manifestation. And that's why in dealing with God, it is impossible for you to walk with God if you do not walk by faith. You see, you have to lay hold on that which God is doing in your spirit as evidence that God has already gone into action concerning the spiritual trans transaction that you presented. And then finally we saw that Jesus said, hallowed be your name. And the reason why he brought that aspect is because the names of God are uh, uh, 
are encapsulations of the revelations of God. God is without end. And so if we are to name God according to the appearances and the uh, miracles that he does around our lives, you'll find out that he will be named, his names will never end. All right? His names will never end. Because as we keep encountering him, we'll find different dimensions of his reality. And if we give him a name according to that encounter, you'll find out that there will be a progressive list of who he is to us. And that list will not be exhaustible because the list will still continue in eternity. So in order for us to know God, one of the things that the Jews did is that every encounter they had with God, they captured that encounter in a name. So names are, are, are capsules that symbolize revelations of God, disclosures of God. You see, if God comes and God decides to heal today, we will now call him the healer. It is a disclosure. So that if a generation comes that had never seen God heal before, but their ancestors saw God manifest in that dimension, they will be able to lay claim to that possibility because it is in their heritage. You get that? Now, so names are significant. It's the instrument by which we can track some of the manifestations of God so that we can expect that God who did that in that generation can do it in our time. Do you still remember the lamentation of uh, Gideon? Gideon, while he was threshing wheat in the cave, the angel came and saluted him, thou mighty man of valor. And he cried out and said, if God be with us, where be is miracles that our father told us of. It means that his ancestors, they saw God in the miraculous dimension. Even though those miracles were not present in their time, it was obvious that there was a heritage that was passed to them. And you see, the angel just greeted him, mighty man. What has that greeting got to do with where be the miracles? Is that how to answer greeting? So you will know that those things were the things he was pondering in his heart. And the reason why he could even ponder was because there was a generation that communicated it to him that in our day, our God was a God of miracles. So that became a springboard for him to interface with God the next time he was privileged to have an encounter. He brought that thing out. Where are the miracles our father told us? Of? Because he challenged God like that. God empowered him to become the signature of the deliverance of Israel. Now, so when God comes to Abraham and says, I am the El Shaddai. But you will need to walk before me and become perfect according to this revelation. And if you are able to achieve that, I will cut a covenant with you. Now, so let us try to see if we can get some understanding of what God meant by that requirement. Let us find out, let us dig deeper into El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Um, hallelujah. One, it means almighty. Two, it means the sustainer. That means he sustains all, but is sustained by none. He's almighty, all powerful. He is the sustainer. And you see, we can relate more with the name sustainer because sustainers suggest sufficient. See, another name for the El Shaddai is the all sufficient. Now, if you know humanity at all, you will know that humanity is insufficient. Is that true? Now, many of us, many young ladies, like this, my friend here, when you got married initially, you felt your husband was very all sufficient, then you now be faced with a reality, a discovery that the way you are expecting him to operate, he seems not to have the capacity to operate like that. 
Now, the reason is because we are all insufficient. That expectation you have belongs to God. You should expect God. It's only God that can satisfy that expectation that you have, not human beings. Human beings are insufficient. But El Shaddai is the sufficient. And then another meaning of El Shaddai means the strong. The strong. The strong. The strong, the sufficient, the almighty. The strong, the sufficient, and what? Have you ever been in a situation, maybe one person died in the family, and after two weeks, another person died, it was as if the whole family was porous to attack, and you wish you were stronger. It's not, humanity is weak. That state of weakness that you just discovered by those two deaths, it's just a revelation of your reality that you have sustained all this while. You were that weak. But you did not know because there was no event to unveil it. But this El Shaddai that we speak of is what? Is day strong. A day comes when the thing that kills people lacks the ability to kill a certain man. It is not because the man, oh, spiritual people know that when you have that kind of strength and defense, it is not because of your humanity, just because you have contacted something that has the antidote for the dimensions of plagues that have been designed to bring you injury. So, so it means that what is strong about you is not you. It's the altar that supports your manifestation. Now, so this personality that was introduced to Abraham, he is called what? The strong. The first thing that Abraham had as the focal point of his body was the fact that his heart his damsel, that he married at tender, succulent age of, of a teenager, was confirmed barren in a teenage age. And now that same woman has entered into menopause. Hallelujah. I don't know. Do we have a gynecologist? Uh, where are my medical people? They have, they, all of them have escaped from here. Yeah, I used to consult them. Now, there is no drug that can be given to reverse menopause. If there's a situation of infertility, there are several drugs that can be administered. Okay, my people have seen some of them. There are several drugs that can be administered to boost the chances of conception to boost hormonal boosts, hoping that some level of fertility can be achieved. But you see, there's no drug for menopause. Just like there is no tablet that you can give somebody that is sleeping to make the person wake up. You can give someone an injection. <laughs> you can give someone an injection for the person to go to sleep. There is no drug you can administer to make them wake up. This man had a challenge and he knows that the source of his problem, no altar can solve it. Not the ones among the Egyptians because he went into Egypt and came out barren. Not the ones, there's no altar that can solve it. So he had an impossible situation and that was an opportunity for God to show that he was the almighty. Superior to circumstances, superior to situations. You see, the life of a mortal man is a mundane life that is characterized by insufficiencies, by limitations, by struggles, that inabilities. And that's the reason why you will need a support system that doesn't have the ailments and the insufficiencies of your natural orientation. And that's the reason why we need to come into covenant so that our covenant past partner can swallow up all our insufficiencies and in him we can do all things because he's available to strengthen us. Exactly. Now, humanity was de designed as a creature of covenant and that's why the best thing that you are good at is insufficiency. And just in case you feel because you made a two-one in physics, in Benue State University. And on the strength of that, your, your, your academic prowess, you can make a headway in life. Hallelujah. It is when you are 39 years old, you might find out that there are several factors that have held that your degree down such that it, there were several quarters that, that you could finish from university 
It was enough. It was a case. It was a spiritual case. And because of that, they have taken that certificate. And one of the mermaids in the region, they put it on the altar. As long as that certificate is before that mermaid, take it to First Bank. Take it to Afri Bank. Take it to, to Zenith Bank. It's not of him that will it. Not him that run it. It is what? Of God that shows mercy. So what that scripture means is that your natural effort will not strike a chord anywhere. It is the support system that supports your willingness and your actions that can translate those your mundane efforts into something that strikes a chord of possibility. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So if Abraham presented this impossible situation before God. And guess what? Let us continue in our reading quickly. Hey, these are, these are big stuff. These are big, big stuff. These are big matters. So let's continue. It's not time for that. Are you still with me? So Abraham's task was for him to walk with the revelation of the heir shall die until he becomes what? Perfect. God took time to tell him how that he was going to be committed to his life. Out of this great lecture, hmm? God lectured him. Gave him time. Gave him opportunity to understand his intentions. And disclose his will to him. After God had taken time to speak with this man. Subsequently his wife now comes to him. On the same subject that God has promised him. That he was going to have a child. On the same subject. Then Sarah walks up to him. And tells him that oh my God. You know my condition. My condition is beyond the scope of prayers. Why not consider my maid? Hallelujah. Abraham did not pray about it. Because he had not yet been perfected in the revelation of God as El Shaddai. He operated the way any normal human being would operate. He operated in the way of the flesh. He still had confidence that since his body was not totally dead, he was still fertile. There were several activities he could still do and several things that were within the scope of his power. And so when, when his wife brought the idea, it looked like that was going to be the solution to the problem that uh, he was talking about. For his wife to be the one to bring the idea for him to consider the maid. Maybe it was God that was at work, you know. <laughs> it may be the Lord. <laughs> Because he was not the one that went out to suggest it. He was sitting in his tent. And the wife now brought the proposal and said. Can see. The obvious. Consider the obvious. And you see. He, 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 Abraham normally prays about things like that. But when that proposal came. He went straight. He had not yet understood the answer. That, and he was not perfect. According to that revelation. Now do you know every time you walked. In the flesh. You walked. In your human wisdom. You walk by your own ability. Every time it was because. You had not yet embraced. The revelation of. The El Shaddai. And if he wants to help you. That your attempt will fail woefully. It means he's teaching you something. That is the one that went there to frustrate it. Because if he allows you to succeed. In such a matter. You will hang on that success. And that success will be your God. So he will make sure you are frustrated. Some of the frustrations you experience is not because you don't need deliverance. Because suddenly someone will go and enroll for a deliverance. This thing. And Meanwhile, he is not yet perfect in the revelation of what? El Shaddai. God allowed him. He got the child. Made all the arrangement. And then there was a crisis situation. That was when he remembered to consult. And then the great one said, well, I can see there is a child crying in your house. But that is not the child that we carry the covenant that I'm speaking about. I am going to bring a child by your barren wife. So that I will, I will live up to my name as the El Shaddai, the strong, 
the multi-breasted, the ones that has the capacity to sustain all, but it doesn't need sustenance by anyone. Hallelujah. Now, and in order for God to ensure that Abraham had no other alternative, what God did was that God waited for his body to die. That little life that was in his body, with which when they tell him that, see that girl, see that girl, see that girl, he has moved there. He has moved because there's some life. He needs to dispense of the life. Hallelujah. They say, what are you? Ah, he, 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 there's no prayer. This is not prayer matter. This is action. This is action time. If you waste too much time, air will enter. Air. He moved in that life and God waited for him until he became old. Until that very life that was the basis of his distraction. He dried up. When that life dried up, then he now began to pray the kind of prayers he would have prayed initially. He went back to God and asked him, You say you are El Shaddai. <laughs> hey, come think of your life. Anything that has lingered, it is because whenever you had the opportunity, there was still little life in you. You were trying to use it to fulfill prophecy. Meanwhile, as we saw in the last lecture, is it yesterday? Nobody has a power to bring any prophecy to pass. Nobody. I've seen people before that men of God prophesied to. You are going to settle down today. This year, you are going to settle down. And they believed. Only for the damsels to now be making way, making way to settle down. Making way, making way, making way. And then God will, because he loves you, now make sure that after you make way, they break. You know that, that thing on Facebook, as if WhatsApp, there's a broken heart divided. <laughs> the person that designed that logo has an experience. <laughs> ah, you are maneuvering, you are maneuvering, you are maneuvering. It is, your maneuver is because you have not yet known the air shadow. You are not perfect. And there are many things that the Lord will not commit to you. It's available, but it's not going to be committed to you because you have not yet Fulfill the fundamental requirements. And it is when you are dead, you are totally weaned from activities in the flesh that you now show your life is a revelation of the fact that there is one El Shaddai that spoke to me and I will wait for him. Yes, there are opportunities, but me, my own contact is not with opportunities. It is with what? With he said, when you have come to that point, I will now open the package that I have in my bag, the package of covenant, I will open it and then I will contract a covenant with you. Because if I bring this covenant to you, when you have not yet perfected this revelation, you will make a mockery of the covenant. And your life itself will not be secure. Because you don't know what it means to keep a covenant with a spirit being. There are several laws in your village that you don't know where it came from. But they are ancient covenants. And if you see, there are some people that are more afraid of Aleku than anything in this world. Because they know that Aleku doesn't have patience. They know. The guy might be a senator somewhere speaking on the floor. If after he finishes a very charismatic delivery on the floor and then add Aleku now calls him and says, that thing you said, you have to come. The idol is talking. And the place we kept your picture, the picture has stood up. It means <laughs> it means you have no, you are not perfect before the idol come. Walk down, walk down, walk down. It's when we begin to assess the life of the average Christian, you see hypocrisy, you see lies. Meanwhile, the El Shaddai is waiting. Is waiting for you to mature in the revelation he has presented. Hey, will, you, will you stop the action, the activity in the flesh so that God can give you his omnipotent dimension? I hope you know the scripture says that, that, that humanity is insufficient. Romans chapter 8 verse what? 26. Don't forget that. Now give me Romans 8 26. Help me. I, I'm, I want to move high in spirit. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8 verse 26 the Bible says that is the spirit that quickens. No. 
That's John 6, 63. Romans chapter 8, verse... Ah, I'm forgetting my... By verse 26. There's the spirit that helpeth our infirmities. And likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not. He helpeth our infirmities. If this scripture is true, it means God created us with infirmities. And a complete man is man more plus Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, you might be baptized in the Holy Spirit and the help of the Holy Spirit may not be available in your life. It's because you still have not perfected that revelation as the El Shaddai. It's the Holy Spirit that is the supply of the limitations that you have. It, it ministers to those limitations and blows them out. And then out of those areas of weakness that is submitted to him, he manifests his strength. So you can see the sufficiency of God manifested through the Holy Ghost. And the way God designed it is that man submitting under the influence of the Holy Spirit can, can manifest in the brightest colors. Can manifest. It means that there is a level of partnership you can have with the Holy Spirit. That your life will be totally transformed. What do you consider your limitation to be? Lack of money? If you, if that is your limitation, be, uh, be frank. Okay, Lord, the only people that need money this year, there are two of them at the back. <laughs> is there a financial? Okay, according to the doctrine of El Shaddai. Every limitation in your life, God allowed it so that it will become an entry point for you to know the El Shaddai. If your limitations and your weaknesses and your insufficiencies do not lead you deeper into the understanding of the strong, the breasted one, the one that sustains all, it means that there is something else that is your emphasis other than the solution that God is making available. Now, you see, we have started this year on a bad note. Some people came to church with phones on and I told you that my only weakness is the ring tone to so take me 30 minutes now to, to to recover myself in the spirit can we pray in tongues for a few minutes and see if oh my god have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy I go bali kamasa komu priyavane kebas ivozamina roskeva iko salabai kabrunda saku mahambe ata kambre soke mahi kasketombre ah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus glory to God yes he has answered us. The El Shaddai. Sometimes before I come to preach, I have to pray for four hours. The reason is because there is no message. There's no message. I went to preach in Enugu. It was a miracle service. I had no message. And I told them, bring the sick, bring all kinds of affliction. God will heal. And then no message. And the way God sends me to people is that He gives me a message. If He gives me a message, it means every other thing is guaranteed i prayed i prayed i prayed i prayed i prayed i prayed for five hours and there was no message we came to the church and we came very early i prayed 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 and then a small message when i began on that small message it started becoming big because the El Shaddai has come. I was waiting for him to give me a sign. Because when he gives a sign, it means do, do that thing that you are doing. Move out. So he gave me a sign. People that know the El Shaddai, they don't move first. They allow him move. Then they follow. Because this, this container is weak. It doesn't have the ability to deliver. But if you know the El Shaddai, you allow him to move first. And when you move, you follow behind. And then human beings will be seeing you. They don't know it's the El Shaddai. Because it goes beyond the limitations of humanity. There are, there are things about you that I don't know. But the El Shaddai can whisper you. 
In him I have all sufficiency. In him I have no limitation. In him I have no weakness. And that's why Paul could say, I can do all things. Because he has perfected the revelation of God as the year should die. Now, before you quote that scripture and say, I can do all things. Wake up. The last time there was little pressure, you took off in the flesh like a tornado. You built a, an edifice of defense in your own wisdom, hoping to hold back what is coming. And that edifice you built was your own doing because the El Shaddai was standing right by you, but you could not see him. Your flesh and your human wisdom was more tangible to you than what the El Shaddai was offering. And for, are you with me? Any time I move in the flesh and I attempt to defend myself in the flesh and it now scatters, I always go on my knees to ask for mercy just because I lost sight of the El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Yes. I do that deliberately so that it will register on my mind that I am repenting now because I went ahead of the El Shaddai. It helps my, my memory so that when the similar pressure comes up, I'll say the last time, I had to repent. This time, I will wait. I will wait. I can wait. I can wait. Sixteen men rose up. Sixteen. And what they were trying to do was to put me into trouble. Sixteen men. I was in sleep when the Asia died revealed it. I woke up there. Battle again. Battle. So I started fasting. They had three months to strike. And they did not succeed in three months. Because what was working was more than a man. It was the El Shaddai. And on the day I now appeared before the 16 men, they ran away. That's the real day now that I was now on ground. I was around. They took me. It was not me they saw. It was the El Shaddai. So wise men have already valued their insufficiency and they know that it will not survive the amateur. They have decided to walk with the El Shaddai. And so God told him, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. It's after that I will cut a covenant with you. Do you know what? We need a man of covenant to stand in your family. It's only when that man of covenant arises that the covenants that existed before the man showed up we lose their grip on the entire landscape. Now, but we need to perfect this revelation of God as what? As El Shaddai. And meanwhile, God showed three generations. Three generations. He modeled his reality as El Shaddai across three generations. How did I know that? I know that from the book of Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, he modeled his revelation as the El Shaddai across three generations. In Exodus chapter 6 from verse 2, the Bible says, And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. However, I appeared. Yes, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. See, I am Jehovah. So, see, at this time, God was, was ready to reveal another dimension of himself to Moses. And the reason why he wants to reveal the Jehovah dimension, which is the dimension that carries God's covenant dimensions, covenant realities. He was coming on a covenant escapade. He was coming to redeem his people on the basis of the covenant with which he had with their ancestors. From the land of bondage, he was coming to redeem them and he needs Moses to be a functionary uh, like, like, like um, an expression, a human expression of the symbol of that covenant. So Moses' call was based on existing covenants that were in Israel. Right? So and that covenant necessitated him to appear as Jehovah, the covenant God. 
But he said, I, I revealed myself to your ancestors as what? As El Shaddai. By my name, Jehovah. I, they didn't know me by that name. It's you and your generation that will know me as Jehovah. But it took three generations for me to establish the heritage of the revelation of El Shaddai. In the case of Abraham, his limitation was that his wife was barren and he wanted a child. In the case of Isaac, it was a time when rain was not allowed to fall. And so there was extensive famine in the land. And the Bible says in the midst of that famine, God gave him a directive to sow in the land. He wanted to escape to Egypt the way his father escaped. And God cautioned him and asked him to remain in the land. So if he was going to remain, he sowed in the land because God asked him to remain there. And the Bible says in the same year, he reaped an hundredfold. They, we were not told there was a rain. But he sowed. And yet the yield was not 30 fold. The yield was not 60 fold. The yield was 100 fold. So much so that a nation began to envy him. His economy affected the trade route. And the nation began to envy one man that could hear the voice of God. In the days of Jacob, he ran home with a staff. And then he entered into a transaction with the El Shaddai. Even though at that time, he was not yet born again. Uh, he came to God and negotiated the salvation. He said, if you, if you keep me in this place that I'm going, you put clothes on my body, on my back, right? If you ensure that there's no challenge and you bring me back again I will become your man yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will enlist because at that time he was God, Jehovah was God of Abraham and Isaac he was not God of Jacob the guy didn't want he, he, was, he was a bubbling guy he didn't want the ways of his ancestors but he said I don't know. Now I'm, I'm, I don't have access to my ATM card. I'm, I'm all alone here. So, if by any means you can show up and make all these things happen, it's likely that I will submit to you. Hallelujah. You know what? As carnal as that prayer was, if Jacob was wiser than many people, at least it was El Shaddai he went to and said, he knew he was insufficient in himself. And then he went to El Shaddai and said, can you take care of my clothing? Have you ever prayed like that and you believed that prayer? Can you take care of my limitation? See now, the people that are paying my school fees, they have died. Can you? He likes that kind of prayer. When your eyes, the distraction has been removed and you can see his design to help insufficiency if you can present a request and say see my challenge can you show up can you ah, the guy had not yet accepted him to be his god in the name of the transaction that his ancestors had with him he made that request and by the time he came back you would discover that god answered much more than the guy requested and he was already two bands by the time he came back. And by the time he came back, he didn't want to keep his promise. It was an angel that was watching over him. Say, you won't pass here until that dedication that you promise will be made. Because before you pass this place, you promise us. And now that you want to pass over, we must ensure that you are in a state of surrender. They fought. Hallelujah. That, I, I don't have time to explain the kind of fight. Because they fought till they break. Is that true? The question is, why did they fight? Because when the fight was about to end, what happened was that God touched him. The angel what? Touched. So couldn't the angel have touched him in the morning? Why did he wait? They were struggling. 
Because the man's flesh was still strong. He still believed he had some moves. And the angel allowed him. He was still, those, that's the strength of the flesh. When he exhausted all his moves, he touched him. Then he now surrendered to the Eshita. Now, so watch it. There are six things we need to do consistently if we are going to take full advantage of what the El Shaddai is offering. is when we have become perfected in this matter that we can now start to understand covenant and how to walk in covenant. Because I'm going to show you five things that are included in the covenant of Abraham. If you find those five things, each and every one of them has a requirement in the New Testament. And then the five things will give us an understanding of the prescription of what covenant living is. But walk with me. Because we need to perfect how to walk with the Um Let's start with Romans chapter 8, my favorite scripture. Romans chapter 8, my favorite scripture. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 26, my favorite scripture, brings this matter out and delivers it very, very accurately. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. When we are given an assignment, the assignment is impossible to achieve. I ask the Holy Ghost, what is the way out in this matter? I always ask him. Then he floods my mind with ideas on how to go about it. That is when I now discover that the people that ask the question, they actually don't know how the answer looks like. They are waiting for a smart person to come up with a format on how it can be tackled. Then they adopt that format and say, hey, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be. The people asking the questions don't know the answers. I ask the Holy Ghost, Help me. You see, many of us in our work with God, we are so full of ourselves that we do not understand how to draw power from the Holy Ghost that is resident in us. You see, the reason is because you don't acknowledge that you are insufficient, that you are. You are limited. God will go at length to bring you to a point for you to understand that you are limited. And if it has not yet come to you as a revelation that you have limitations, it means you are not likely to master how to walk with God and to enjoy his supplies. Because only men that acknowledge their limitations can take advantage of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Spirit, he is designed to help our infirmities. There is a limitless reason why you will always need to seek God and that reason is because of your obvious infirmities and the Spirit of God is designed to help them. So, in any area that you will allow the Holy Spirit the opportunity by acknowledging your insufficiency, you have actually mobilized Him to bring help to. But in areas that you feel that you are most competent, he will stay out of your way because you are a master of that field. The extent to which you can see spirit's help is the degree to which you acknowledge your infirmities and your limitations. Hallelujah. Today, in that area of your limitation, that area that you, you have tried in your wisdom and it has failed, can you go back to him and ask him, show me what to do? And stay in that prayer with fasting. Show me what to do. Show me what to do. Only a man that acknowledges his limitation can pray that kind of prayer. There are several prayers that only people that acknowledge that they are weak can pray. But as long as you are strong, you don't need God's help. And it's obvious that uh, 
the average believer is so strong these days. And so the help of God is far. But people that have been able to appropriate the help of God again and again and again are men that understand how limited they are. How limited they are. For about five years now, the, my major prayer point is help me Lord. Yes. That is the ones that I put to English language. It's not more than help me. Because I found out I'm, I'm a bundle of infirmities. When I check this area, I say, Kai God. I check that area, I say, oh my. It, ah, see, shame is coming. Shame is already on the way. It's nothing. Help me. And I pray desperately. Then he comes and then he whispers. His voice of commitment and his voice of covenant. Now don't worry, I have taken care of this aspect. I've taken care of this aspect. Then I will roll on the ground and roll and give him glory. And then when I come out, somebody will see me and say, you are a wise man who will see me. Well, you are solving problems. As if only you knew how I was rolling on the ground. I acknowledge the fact that I was born with infirmities. In fact, most normal men have better right standing than myself. So I need to go and hide. And the extent to which you place demands on him will actually come out of an acknowledgement of your insufficiency. If I see the way you are praying, because somebody came the other day, I saw him close to the side, put his hand in the pocket, and he, his, his tongues were computer tongues. Computer. I said, You. <laughs> I look, I look at <laughs> So I knew that his own flight will be in the night. <laughs> oh, I, I, he was a bundle of sufficiency. Maybe he was telling God his achievement. I have two cars parked. I just got a master's degree, you know. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Oh my. Second, 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 second. <laughs> The spirit. <laughs> he said, Walk thou before me and be thou. What? You must have known. No human being knows how to walk miracles. The miracle walker is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, And the spirit, the spirit walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. Following. That's how I discovered how to minister with signs. First of all, I need to receive his word from him not my own but his own then when i go to deliver his own he is compelled to come and what confirm his word with ah, i said glory so my greatest challenge as a minister and i've been ministering for long is that i don't it's very difficult for me to have a message i know you get messages supernaturally and maybe you think i'm a star i'm a professional and I just come open the scriptures and it burns. It's my wife I normally complain to. No message. And she too, she said, it's coming. See? She doesn't understand. No message. Sometimes I have to trek on the road. You would think I'm trekking. I'm not trekking. I'm looking for a message. So I'm trying to humble myself by trekking. Maybe that will please him. And they will say, okay. The more insufficient you feel, the more of his help you can get. Yes. The reason why you are like this, you are sufficient. Your trouble has not yet brought you to an acknowledgement of the fact that you are incapable. May the troubles multiply until it gets you to a point where you say, oh boy, this thing knew the war. He knew the war. It was designed to crash so that you will look for the Holy Ghost. He's the one that helps a family. He was designed to crash. On the road, like that. On the road. On the road. I will pray, 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 pray. Sit somewhere. Somebody will say, God, he did fast. He did fast. You see, there's no way you can understand the transaction that I have with God just by seeing me. But you see, the entire process is tied to a very deep sense of insufficiency. A deep sense of insufficiency. I stood on the crusade ground without a message and that, that's the one that kills on the crusade ground. 
a crowd, big crowd. People that knew me, they stood up and they said, Hoah! Meanwhile, ah. I say, please don't look at them. You know me and you. There's a problem. They say, ah. I was going to the altar and then they now brought protocol, protocol, and the protocol were trying to do as if they are doing something. I did. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was without a sermon. I was just saying, where are you? The protocol, they, if you come close, they <laughs> Somebody in the crowd now say, I traveled all the way from Benin to Como. I came from Benin. The, the little Holy Ghost I was already transacting with, when they said that one, Holy Ghost left. And my, my problems multiply. Now, I want to, I want to, have you really discovered that you are inadequate? Have you discovered it? Has it come to you as a revelation? Or oh, if not, your life is not about to change. You. Your life is not about to change. Meanwhile, I must tell you, I was one of the people that felt I was most sufficient than other men. Yes, I was not born like this. I felt I was a star. A luminary. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. You can't understand. Hey, I felt I was the last color on earth. Until the things in which my confidence was based, they could not deliver in the day of trouble. Then I knew that I was living in deception. From that day, I knew I needed God. If it has not yet come to you, your life is not about to change. The only way it will change is how I'm telling you. As I was moving. Meanwhile, I didn't know he took note of every time I sighed and I waited for his presence. I waited. I waited. By the time I got to the pulpit, everybody stood up. I mean, thousands of people. I was still looking for him. If you see a man that knows Jehovah, you will know when he is looking for him. He can forget about his vehicle, his cell phone, his laptop, and he's on the street. If you ask him, why are you here? He has no physical reason to tell you why he's trekking, but he's searching for God. A friend of mine, he didn't know how he labored and he entered some farmer's farm. So when the farmers came in the morning with order, a man with Agbada in the farm, he didn't look right. But there was no way he could explain himself. There was no way. Whether the farmers went back and said, this pastor, don't they do something? No. That's their business. But he is looking for what? For something. That's the level of helplessness. The spirit helped. What? Anything God needs to do to you this year that will make your infirmities plain to you, you become conscious that you cannot contend with these infirmities by your wisdom. Anything he will do to you to bring you to that level is what will be the trigger for your greatness. There is greatness, but only the Holy Ghost can find it. The journey begins by an acknowledgement of the fact that you are insufficient. You are insufficient. You are insufficient. Guess what happened when I came to that crusade ground? And then the I, I say, I say, shout hallelujah! Everybody shouted. Then I said, Where are you did? When I did it the third time, the message dropped. So the fourth hallelujah, I said that you shout. That one me, I jumped. Because what? I found help. Oh my god. <laughs> We got 1,000 converts that night. 1,000. With men weeping to come to the feet of Jesus. Because I found him. I found him. That was the day I prayed. And when I prayed and miracles began to take place, a, a Muslim boy ran home and brought his blind father. And I don't know how they did it. The, 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 those, those protocol that they were jumping. I don't know how they passed them. You know, when you 
people have found help, you can see a blind man like this. And what you see is not his blindness. It's the Lord Jesus. His ability. His power. His potency. Hallelujah. Oh! I was moving with the intercessors. Everybody fell down. We, could, we were walking from here to here. The power of God brought everybody down. The crowd wanted to come and hold me. It was by power that, that I moved out. Power. People fell like this, fell like that. Then I, I fell. Because he had come. Meanwhile, before he came, only me and the Holy Ghost knows how I stay to wait for him. He, he can make you shine. He can make you shine. You want to shine? Die first. Die. Look for him. Uh, die to your strength. Uh, look for him. He will make you shine in the brightest colors. The kind of honor you can't give yourself. I think you are proud because you believe you have honor. You don't have it yet. The type you cannot give yourself, God will give you when you acknowledge that you don't have what it takes to prosecute your destiny. The first thing that you need to know, if you are going to walk with the El Shaddai, who is the all-sufficient, the helper of infirmity, if you are going to walk with him, it must come to you as a revelation that I am what? Insufficient. As long as you have not come there, you are likely to walk in the flesh. There's an alternative that is still at your disposal that you are going to exploit instead of falling before the Lord. That's the first point. That's the first point. When somebody comes and says, oh, there is a problem, pastor, the person doesn't know that pastor is insufficient. If you start counseling people, you will now begin to discover how insufficient you are. These guys have physical problems, they have tangible problems, and you are totally incapacitated in bringing solutions to them. You know this is a curse that is operating in this person's life. You know this is, this is, a, this is a cyclical situation. Somebody programs something, and that thing is working. You know this one, this one is uh, it's because of land dispute that they are attacking this person. You, you, you can read the trend because you are experienced, you have seen such cases. So you know, you can trace where it's coming from, but you, you can't do anything about it except you find help. Now, a woman, I don't know how she got my number, sent me a message. Say, I'm this person. My condition is that I'm paralyzed halfway. And this thing started so, so time. Someone said you could help. So I got your number. I sent you this message. I said, then I went to God. I said, I put the message before. I said, Since when? <laughs> At what time did I become a miracle worker? Where was it published? On which newspaper was it? Punch or Vanguard that I had strange abilities to heal people. And I asked God to give me something to tell the woman. The first day, nothing. We came for prayers. I went back. There was nothing to tell the woman. She now sent me a text again. You say I should call back now. I say it's a human being that told you that you should call back now. And that human being is telling you to come back tomorrow. Because the one that you want to hear has not come. You know, I, I like to be very sincere because I'm not in charge, you know. If you are still if you still have flesh at work in you, you, you are you are likely to give false hope. And say, oh no, I have a cure. Glory. God will leave you on stage. <laughs> so I told her that the great one had not yet come. Then the second day again, I told her he didn't come. Then the third day, I was about telling her, he has not come when my eyes opened. Then I saw that she was fighting with a man on about a land. And that man charmed her. And I'm not tight. I say I see you in contention with a man about land matters and the man child. He says she doesn't remember. I say, okay, the Lord will bring it to your memory. One hour later, I came and saw again. She had sent a text. Pastor! In Stroh, I've been fighting. <laughs> I've been fighting. 
And I now saw that the great one was already involved. Do you understand? Because he brought the revelation. So on the strength of the revelation, this night, when I go back, I'm going to pray. A simple prayer. And then she'll get healed. Because the great one arose. He's the one that gave me the revelation. Right? And since I didn't have time to pray yesterday, today I have time. And when I begin to pray, he will still use my prayer as a means of reaching out to the woman because he started the process by what? Giving a revelation. If you have not yet acknowledged your inadequacy, you are not about to go far with God. I don't know how best to drive this matter into your heart. Your work with God begins by an acknowledgement of your inadequacies. Second, your inadequacies are supposed to open the door to your prayer life. See, knowing that you are insufficient is supposed to be a basis to contact God. What should be your motivation in the place of prayer is a full understanding of your insufficiency. Hallelujah. You know, I told you 16 people came together and they wanted to attack me. And I felt that there was danger. And then I began to pray and began to fast. When I began to fast, I began to pray. And then after three days of praying and fasting, the grace to fast multiplied. And when the grace to fast multiplied like that, I know that there is something that God wants to handle through my fasting and prayer. So I became serious about it. I became very serious about it. And I began to engage it with an understanding that God wants to do something. Now all these things I was doing, I did not know what was happening. And I was in that fast for three months. Hmm? For three months. Sixteen men. And they could do nothing. When the story came out of how those men tried to destroy me. And, and how they were totally incapacitated. You will know that God is a covenant king. They couldn't. They, they are threats. They were threats. And for three months, they couldn't fulfill it. And I was privileged to meet them three months later. They dispersed the rango. Probably because they have seen the effort they're put into trying to destroy me. And it did not work for three months. It means this is not a man to interact with. It's a bad man. Hallelujah. Now, it's not about me. It's about God. But you cannot move the hand of God as, as powerfully as that if you yourself don't acknowledge that you are limited. Do you know who has taken your name to a particular place to see how to bring injury into your life? Do you know the forces that have been marshaled against your destiny? And that's why we need to know how to keep in step with the Almighty God. Now, stay with me. Second point. You know I said that the acknowledge of your, acknowledgement of your inadequacy is supposed to open you up to prayer. One of my major motivations in the place of prayer is that I know that I am limited. Because I am limited, I know the only way to deal with my limitation is to engage God. So I keep crying out to God. I keep crying out to God. Many people have asked, ah, why do you pray like this? In my own opinion, I don't pray enough. Thus, I felt I had more ability to pray, to communicate God. Because I know that if I'm talking to God, who is a spirit being, I'm begging him to intervene, begging him to intervene. There is no way that exercise can be in futility. Yes, that exercise. If seven of us gather and we begin to pray consistently, 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 Engaging God, engaging God. There is no way that exercise will be in futility. Meanwhile, the reason why we are consistent is because we know that we have tried other ways, it didn't work. So we are sufficient, we are we understand our level of insufficiency. So we have decided to cut covenant with God. We will stay with Him until He answers us. There are many pressures that will come your way, and the devil will bring alternatives on how to handle those matters. And it's very likely that you will subscribe to the devil's solution to those matters if you have not yet come to a point where you say, it is only God that will solve my problem. Are you with me? He sees that you had options. 
but you decided to stay with him it means that you wanted to do business with him he's excited the next thing he will test you with is when you start praying he won't answer first to see whether you could get discouraged and then change the plan you know he's in charge he decides when he sets up he decides what he does you may cry 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 will not move him and then when you stay there as if there's no answer will you consider another option another alternative if you if you say no for me oh, even if he slays me yet i will seek him so he knows that okay you don't have any other god to turn to it's only him that you have all right well, once that is guaranteed he will show you a sign this is how god operates with his people sometimes in, in order to answer your prayer what you will do is just say um take two hundred thousand to this person now you're not asking i'm asking you for this you don't know that that obedience is a proof that he is your god he just wants to a manifestation of faith from your life that proves that he is actually your god he can control you he can tell you what to do you are not the one in charge take 200,000 give that system and then things sometimes the trigger that will open the answers to your prayer is a simple obedience that God will require meanwhile when I begin to pray when I begin to pray normally this is my own experience God will say go and give somebody this vehicle and you know what when God begins to respond he will give me that same vehicle but a better model that same year this is the dealing of god on my on my life he came to me last year he said give this bands out told me who to give the bands out to i told my wife he said okay we can't give it out like this we repaired it give it back. before last year ended somebody had a Benz in his house and the person that one is better than the one that we gave up the person said uh, it seems you people need this thing and then god will not give us the same kind of vehicle if we give out Mercedes Benz, we give us Mercedes Benz, so that we will know that it is because of that first one between this one meanwhile he wants to answer prayer he will now this year he has come again we were praying. He said, This is your white vehicle. Go and give it. That's how it is with me. I don't know how it is with you. They, they all sufficient. They will give you an instruction. I've already obeyed. I've fixed the vehicle. And then when the person that God said we should give comes, we give the person. And all of that was in response to a prayer that we prayed. And now say, do like this. Now, let your ears be open. God has many ways of answering prayer. For me, if he wants to answer a great prayer, he will say, go and give something. Six months later, he will answer that thing I requested for and more. Six months later. So this year, any year that God doesn't say, go and give this thing, I'm afraid. Because that's not how he has dealt with me. The way he deals with me is that when I'm praying deep prayer, you say, rise up, take this. I was at home on Christmas. They say, rise up. I said, yes, sir. Move. And he didn't tell me where I was going. I was driving. He said, go like that. Enter here. I was not asking, why am I in this service today? He said, wait. And the preacher was preaching. He said, The next alert that comes to your phone, give that preacher. That's why I attended that service. So I went to the preacher. I said, Can I have your account number? He gave me the ministry account. I said, This is very good. But what I'm looking for is your account number. Then when he gave me, he was afraid to even pray for me. But that's not my business. 
I came from what? The moment I got home, I saw the alert. If I begin to pray, meal, and God doesn't say, take this, give it, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. After I've given that thing, if you like, go to Ikboba Hill and carry the head of seven virgins and say, as you are lifting it, what will strike you, you will not know the name. May God open your eyes to know that you are insufficient. Your insufficiency becomes the motivation behind your prayer life. Prayer opens you up to God. The response to prayer can be an instruction. The response to prayer can be an information. God gives you an information that you didn't have before. Maybe the reason why people are in bondage in your family. It shows you. There is always a supernatural response that God gives to prayer. You might be battling a thing, battling a thing. God will just say, stand up in the morning. Take this. Go here and give it. That giving, that obedience becomes the trigger that will release God. I was praying and fasting on my birthday and God said, go and take this amount. Go to that preacher. Give when he told me that, then somebody called me and said, that same preacher, he wants to buy something and his remaining so, so, so amount. I sent my money. The preacher bought that. And, but God told me first. Before I even heard that there was a need. I sent it there. The kind of things God has said I should give from my birthday to today is much. Is much. That's how I know that a year is powerful. When God begins to say, Go to this place. Some of the people he say I should sow to, some of them are my children spiritually. You know, some people, I don't know whether God that uh, law that you don't give. No, you see, God is a father of us all. Oh. Some of them, he said, go and meet them. Give them this. Do that. Do like this. It's prayer. That thing I'm doing is, is prayer. The prayer I prayed with my mouth, and then there's a prayer I'm praying with my giving. Then when I finish doing all those things, then he will stop instructing me. I am powerful. You can't destroy me. Because he, I have obeyed the Lord. Now, we must understand how the answers to prayer comes in your life. For me, most often, it comes in a directive to give. How does it come to You will not have any motivation to continue in the place of prayer until you know that you are inadequate. When I obey him, then he begins to walk. 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 The way doors open, you begin to wonder, how did this door open? This door open. Before I came here, somebody called me from another country. What happened? He said, you had been hearing my message in the morning. One called me and said, he couldn't sleep all night. I said, I'm ready to bind the demon. He said, it's not a demon, it's your message. What? <laughs> Hallelujah. Every God can go to South Africa and make somebody not to sleep so that the person can meet your need. I've seen that before. Nations wake somebody up. He said, I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I was hearing your name. At least. Today, as of today, I've heard three people that my name came to them in their dream. One lady from Zimbabwe, she says she was sleeping. And an old man came and told her, go and look for Arome Osai. Look for him. She woke up. The name was Claire. She wrote it down, went on the internet, Googled, and thank God our brethren are doing a great work putting our things online, she saw one of my tapes, she clicked it, and she entered into tears. Seriously. 
Another guy, the guy I just finished talking with now, how did he know me? It was in a dream too. Somebody came and hey, why is it that your own name is forgotten? Nobody knows it. Even if, when you take the name and go on air, on channel, say, I am here! Nobody watched that night. Ah, what happened? Your infirmities have covered you. There is nothing that God cannot do. But you need to empty yourself before he will fill you up. Now, I'm going to stop here today because... There is a practical session to everything that we are teaching. Alright, so the practical will run for 30 minutes. Tomorrow I'll continue the, in the teaching. Tomorrow is a deep, deeper aspect. These are basics. You will see when God will come and say, That's your son Isaac. Bring him. At the end of the day, you will discover it was not the son he was looking for, he was looking for something else. Are you ready to work with God? That's the question. Are you really ready to work with Him? Or you just want to do play games around? Working with God will cost you. It will cost you something. If anybody made you think that working with God was... There are several times you are going to cry because you are working with God. And after crying, you will not be comforted. And you leave you in that state. Yes. And the reason why you are in that state is because you are working with him. He said you should do something. And that thing is, is dead. It's killing you. He has to kill you first before you make your life. And you need to be told what you to expect on the path of working with God. Now, I want to bring up Jangfa. He will minister to us for the next 30 minutes before we close camp today. Tomorrow we will begin by nine, then we'll go deeper. Can we lift up our hands where we are bless the Lord? I just worship him tonight. Have you not heard? Has it not been told you? And the everlasting God, the Lord of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. For there is no searching of his understanding. For he giveth power to the weak, and to they that have no might, he increaseth strength. For the youth shall run, and utterly faint and be weary. But they that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Can you just open your mouth and say, Lord, tonight we lean on your everlasting arm. We lean on your strength. We wait upon you. We wait upon you tonight as we enter this season. We wait upon the mighty hand of God that you will carry us tonight. That you will carry us for underneath is your everlasting arm. We wait on your everlasting arm. Parabashate kahaya. Manda kapariando sakapando sakaya. Radiada bado sakapando silabalahate. Can you pour out your heart and say, Lord, I lean on your everlasting arm. I lean on the hand of your power. I lean on the right hand of your power. I lean on your strength tonight. Open your mouth. I say, Lord, we lean on your strength. Lord, we lean on your strength. Lord, we lean on your strength. Lord, we wait on you tonight. Spirit of the Lord, we wait on you tonight. Spirit of the Lord, we wait on you tonight. Spirit of the Lord, we wait on you. 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 Salabaria Kabashata Bariandos. For the hand of the Lord is upon us. 
for the right hand of the Lord do it valiantly the right hand of the Lord is full of power the right hand of the Lord is full of power though the youth shall run and be weary they shall utterly faint but they that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength Kaporo so paladias la frate ke bariada dos la kabariando si paladade aladai gabaladias i want you to pray the holy ghost the right hand of the lord is powerful the right hand of the lord break at the seed of lebanon shaka pariando saya radiado shaka baliando for the Lord is giving strength tonight. 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 For He has sent redemption to His people. He has commanded His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. He sent redemption to His people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Frata parianda bayata. La cate chapariades. Falianda rabadiados. The presence of the Lord is here. Kala la da ila la taye. Ile bayata lina manados. But this is the night that men will be made kings. It is the night that men will be made kings. Can you press on him tonight? Pariada Badosha, Manda Baya, Saka Bariando, Afrate Sepate, La Cata Sipaladias, Ila Fateliadados, Aya Maria Des. Arriba ya la des, arriba ya la le la la da des, acapariando dos. For the Lord brings redemption tonight. The Lord brings redemption in this season. The hand of the Lord is stretched For God is said to redeem. He said to redeem tonight. He's redeeming your calling. He's redeeming his call upon your life. He's redeeming his mandate upon you. Frata go parte. Linkotos. From some of you tonight, this is a night of redemption. This is a night of redemption. This is a night of redemption. Friday, la copo paliade. The hand of the Lord is upon us tonight to bring redemption, to establish His covenant. La copa le Cecilia. Lete le gade dias manto sa cavalate la cavariando ros I see that stretch upon some people now the hand of the Lord is upon you it will clothe you it will clothe you just press on press on the touching press on the touching it will clothe you it will clothe you with his grace he will clothe you with his strength he will clothe you with his abilities he will swallow up your insufficiency that mortality may be swallowed up by life Lord, impart your strength tonight. Lord, impart your strength tonight. The spirit of might is in this place. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. God is imparting his strength. He's imparting his strength. Yes, it comes upon you. Yes. 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 Ka 
variando se la va se la vaya es y a varadias yes i see the lord bringing us into deeper waters there is a plunging into deeper waters today there is a plunging in in the deeper waters there is a plunging in in the places that we have never been for the hand of the lord holds us the hand of the lord holds us the hand of the lord holds us the capolo cosa fratele gedias ligodos receive strength now receive strength now receive strength 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 there is a clothing of his spirit going on there is a clothing of his spirit he's clothing the young and old alike he's clothing his people the nice receive the clothing 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 mando copa que li frate que ligo dos ligo do do dos ligo dos ligo yo 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 dos jesus jesus let your hand be stretched out now stretch for the hand of your power this clot in you this clot in you this clot in you now now holy ghost 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 with the worship team is clot in you is giving you a new glory is giving you a new glory is releasing a new glory a new glory upon you a new glory a new glory a new glory for i see a new glory tonight a new glory is released a new glory is released a new glory is released in front of me lord clot them clot them from the front to the back release the glory release the glory release the glory release 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 i see him removing filthy garments i see the lord removing filthy garments take it away filthy garments from someone now holy ghost holy ghost remove is removing the filthy garments and is clothing you is clothing you the young man by the window there is a clothing there is a clothing there is a clothing there is a clothing fratecetos licobariades for the lord comes to give strength he comes to give strength he comes to give strength tonight he gives strength he gives strength the lord says in this season is over many in the new threshold of the supernatural there's a new threshold of the supernatural that we are entering into as a house in this season i see the lord open a new threshold a new threshold of the supernatural and as many would desire tonight come into it step into it step into it step into it jesus 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 kabariando boko shabalas for this is the city where men will be made kings for there is a new authority there is a new authority that the lord is giving us tonight that the lord is giving people who have been faithful there's a new authority coming upon you a new covering a new covering a new covering a new seal 
of his spirits of his spirits because you have been obedient because you have been faithful because you have been faithful shabariando kobalate lakoto pataliandis ilabrados librados I hear the Lord say that is a pattern gift of healing tonight. It's a pattern gift of healing tonight. That many will carry this ability, will carry the power, and it will become a tool for the harvest in this hour. It will become a tool for the harvest. Lord, let there be activations. Let there be impartations. Let there be releases. 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 Man, toko balidos. Liko bariando superlehila. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for the strength. The Lord says there is an angel that is being released in this season to work with this ministry. And he calls it the messenger of the covenant. He calls it the angel of the covenant. The angel of the covenant of this house. The angel of the covenant of this house. And in this season, his activity is going to be pronounced. His workings is going to be pronounced. His workings is going to be pronounced. And he will open impossible doors. He will open impossible doors. He will open impossible doors. Lord, we activate his function tonight. We activate his functions tonight. We activate his functions tonight. We activate his function. We activate his function. E cabara sofre guias. E la manana na sombra cada variando robodos. E la manana na robodos. Lord we thank you for tonight. Mando bakashat. Oh we give you glory. Oh we give you glory. Oh we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. While I came here ministering, Ma, the sister, the, the minister sitting behind you. I see that angel standing behind you. That angel standing behind you. And I'm seeing him touching you. I'm seeing him touching you. And God says, He's canceling covenants with the grave. He's canceling covenants with the grave. He's canceling covenants with the grave. He said, Death shall not come near you. Death shall not come near you. Death shall not come near you. But I say that you've been having dreams and oppressions, and you've been afraid of death, you've been threatened. But God says tonight, I break the power of death, it shall not come near you, it shall not come near your children, it shall not come near your home. For I see you standing alone and you've been crying to the Lord. And you've been saying, Lord, how did I get here? You've been standing alone with the children. I don't know what's been happening with you. But that spirit of death that has come, yes, thank you, Lord. That spirit of death that has come and has stolen your beloved. God says tonight, I bring redemption to your home. I bring redemption. You will not be afraid anymore. 
those torments of the night cease those torments of the night cease for the Lord says I shall stand with you and I shall strengthen you and I shall be your help I don't know why I'm saying this but he said I shall stand instead of a husband let him stand for you he said I will stand for you I will stand for you I will stand for you and I will defend you I will fight the battles I will fight the battles and that thing that moves in your body tonight the hand of the strong one removes it the hand of the strong one removes it sometimes you feel like your heart is going to leap out of your chest but today the Lord brings redemption the Lord brings redemption in these three days God is stretching out redemption over these cities God is bringing redemption over these cities God is bringing redemption over these cities and the Lord shall give us a sign he shall give us a sign he shall give us a sign He says today he break the power of death. Death shall not come near. For I'm seeing someone who walked in here. You lost your both parents. And particularly last year you lost one of your parents. You have lost one previously. And you came here being afraid because you've been tormented by death. If you're that person, just wave your hands. You lost one of your parents last year. You lost one like three years ago. But God says today, I break the covenant. I break the covenant of death. I break the covenant of death. Death. Jesus. 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 There's a lady in the congregation by the name Grace. The hand of the Lord will come upon you now. The hand of the Lord will come upon you now. Holy Spirit, do your work. Do your work in her. Do your work in her. Do your work in her. Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, thank you Lord Jesus, thank you Lord Jesus, for in this season God is bringing his people into intimacy, there's a new release, God is calling people into intimacy, God is calling people into new intimacy, new level of intimacy, new level of intimacy, new level of intimacy thank you jesus thank you jesus reverend Ogbe, when i came i was praying in in the house and i saw you standing standing and holding the song and you were carrying your song in a strange land God says there is an open door. 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 They say, watch and see. I go before you swiftly. I go before you swiftly. I go before you swiftly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you lift up your hands and bless the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Can you pray in the next two minutes? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. La prakata shaprando sikabalabadi. Can we ask the Lord that He will come mightily as a strong one? That He will come mightily as a strong one in this season. Say, Lord, come mightily as a strong one. Strengthen every one of us. Strengthen every one of us. Strengthen every one of us. For the Bible says, where there are no oxen. 
the creep is empty. He said, "What well, much increase is by the strength of an ox. And this weekend, God is giving strength to his people. There is the strength of an ox that is being ministered. There is the strength of the ox that is being ministered. There is the strength of the ox. Can you open your mouth and say, Lord, I receive that strength tonight. I receive the strength of the Lord. I receive the strength of the Lord. I receive the strength of the Lord. I receive strength. I receive strength. Matwata Labadoska. Mando Saparianda Bados. Mando Rabade Sika Maria Bados. Maria da Baladia Doska. Manda Kapa Puananasa. Ila Bariando Robodos. Liba Rakoto Patia. Ila Patuana Ne. Ila Prando Sapandiatos. Ila Quande Barido Sibalaya. Ila Mano Sipariando Rabadiska. Mando Sekeliando. Say, Lord, strengthen us tonight. Liko Parande Kesulabadi. Ila Tosi Cabariandos. Malabariados. Baliadabados. As we are praying now, I see someone who could not walk well with one of the legs suddenly begin to walk. If there's anybody around you who came in, we couldn't walk. We couldn't walk. We couldn't walk. The hand of the Lord is in this place. If there's any such person, bring the person to the front. I just saw someone who could not walk begin to walk. Jesus. 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 Strengthen us anew. Strengthen us anew. Cabrodo Sapariandoska. La Patia Baradiados. Ila Bariando Robodos. I Caporo Zilegedia. Ilegedos. Ilegedos. I see the Lord open a new well in this house. I see the Lord open the wells of revival. The wells of revival. For this year shall be characterized by revival. By our pourings. Personal revival. Corporate revival. Can you open your mouth and speak to the Lord? Mantola Bariando Robodos. Ila Bariando Robodis. Kila Bariandos. Go ahead and pray. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I release the rain. of darkness. I break the powers of darkness and I release strength. I release strength. Strength. For the power of witchcraft is broken. The power of witchcraft is broken. Break. 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 Jesus. You are free. You are free. Stretch your legs. The strength, the hold of witchcraft is broken. Just run toe and throw. Do what you couldn't do with the leg before you came. Jesus, 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 run, run, Jesus, Jesus. I see growth disappearing from somebody's chest, from somebody's chest, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 yeah, 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 no, no, no. the wells of revival is open in this season, it is open, it is open, lift up your hands and drink, of the wells, drink 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 of the wells. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
For this season, young people are going to rise with a new level of strength. The power to bring revival is upon us. It's upon us in this season. It's upon this house. It's upon this house. God says, I have come to start and I've come to fulfill my covenant of revival. My covenant of revival. My covenant of revival. I have come to fulfill that covenant. I have come to fulfill that covenant. Jesus. Jesus. Monta Cabariados. Monta Pariacatos. Lika Pariando Robodos. Everyone in the congregation over there, lift up your hands. I'm praying the spirit for two minutes. Pray in the spirit for two minutes. There is a release I see. There is a release I see. There is a release of the hand of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Begin the revival with us. Begin the revival with us. Begin the revival with us. There is a release of revival fire. There is a release of revival fire. There is a release. There is a release. There is a release. For the Lord has come to fulfill his covenant. For the Lord has come to fulfill his covenant. Twelve people now, the strong hand of the Lord. Twelve of you, the strong hand of the Lord is upon you now. Is upon you now. Twelve people. Twelve people. Twelve people. Twelve people. Lord, let the revival fire. Let it begin. Let a new level of strength. Let a new level of strength. Let it begin. 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 Let a new strength. A new strength come upon us. A new strength come upon us. For these are the days that many will be empowered to do great things for the Lord. To do great things for the Lord. To do great things. Jesus. 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 Jesus 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 For times of refreshing comes Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord Times of refreshing For you have been running from the Lord He comes to you now He comes to you now he comes to you. He comes to you. He comes. He comes. He comes. He comes. He comes. I see a blood spread over this place. And the Lord said, I come tonight. I come to many of you. I come to many of you. I come to many of you. I come to you tonight. I come to you tonight, Jesus, 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 for God says there shall be restoration, there shall be restoration in this weekend, there shall be restoration of glory, there is restoration of glory, there is restoration of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The lady wearing the media t shirt Wearing the media t shirt I just saw a wind blowing over you. A wind blowing over you. A wind blowing over you. A wind blowing. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. A new impartation. God says it's a breakthrough anointing. It's a breakthrough anointing. It's a breakthrough. For I say the Lord give great light in this season. The Lord gives us great light. For he has ordained a lamb for his anointed. For he has ordained a lamb for his anointed. Sad the Lord. 
Lord showed me someone. I saw someone sent five million naira, and God says it's going to happen shortly, and that will be a sign. And as soon as that happens, there will be like a ripple effect of supernatural finances that will begin to come in for the ministry, for you, for the ministry in this season. Shortly, God is going to give that sign. And God says it will open a season of financial prosperity. Suddenly people will prosper in this year. Suddenly people will have access to supernatural resources. People will be empowered in this season for supernatural resources. Because the season to build the house of the Lord is come. It is come. It is come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I saw in the spirit and I heard the name of someone mama this has to do with your family extended I heard someone being called Elijah I don't know who that is but I hear someone being called Elijah Elijah is supposed to be the female Yoruba version but I heard that name called Elijah. I don't have all the details. But I see a work of redemption that the Lord begins in the family in response to prayer. And I see Elijah being taken away. I see Elijah being taken away. There are certain of the details that I don't have the release to say here. I hear Elijah and I hear Jumoke. I don't know that, but I just speak the things that I hear. For there's a series of judgment that begins. A judgment unto redemption. A judgment unto redemption. A judgment unto a redemption. And God is saying in this season that we have entered, the sword of the Lord will pass over this city, over Benue State, and there shall be judgment unto redemption for I saw a major attack come after the election season but God says arise for this state arise for this state arise for this state the Lord had to wake me up with a vision to show me this he said but he arise for this state and God is saying within now until election time and after election let there be intense prayer for this land for the enemy will come like a flood but God says I, I have lifted up his standard I have lifted up his standard I have lifted up his standard so the enemy come like a flood but God says he has lifted up his standard thank you father